something red or something? Yeah. Good. Um, so anyway, um, it's like this. A little review of this unit in like five minutes. Um, yeah, it's like this. I want to find the area between two curves. So like I um, split those curves up into lots of rectangles that are pretty small. In particular, they're like delta x uh, thick. And uh, for an arbitrarily chosen x value, you know, the height of the rectangle is fx minus g of x. So the area of one rectangle is just f of x minus g of x, the difference in the y values, uh, times the thickness um, of the rectangle. And then you just add them all up and you're going to get from a to b. Cool? OK, good. Same thing over here, but now I'm integrating with respect to the y-axis. So I choose an arbitrary um, element. Uh, I, I choose an arbitrary y-value on the y-axis between a and b. And now the dimensions of that rectangle are length of the rectangle, which is g of y minus f of y. In other words, the difference between the x values of these two things um, times the thickness of the rectangle, which is dy, and then integrate up the y-axis from a to b. OK, now we get to these crazy volume problems. So here is the region enclosed between f and g. Uh, and I want to um, rotate about the line y equals k. Well, I'm like forced to draw my rectangle vertically, because it's just like the only thing I can do. Um, and if I have this rectangle vertically, then now I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to make a um, washer. Yeah. Good. Have a piece of celery? Looks delicious. All right. Um, so, um, so we have this washer. And what's relevant in order to be able to find the volume of this is um, to be able to know the dimensions of the washer. The dimensions of the washer are, well, I need to know the inner radius like, and the outer radius, right? Oh. So know my like, advanced use of curly braces. You should do that, too, because then it's just like you can't be wrong. It's just like everything's right there. No. So for a particular x value, that y coordinate is g of x, that y coordinate is f of x, and so then the radius is like, is that one cool with this? The like picture is like right there. Yeah. So the volume of a single washer is like pi big r squared minus pi little r squared. So I can say take the outer radius k minus g of x, square it, minus the inner radius k minus f of x, square it, uh, multiply that whole thing by uh, pi and the thickness of the um, washer, and then that's the volume of a single washer. I want the volume of all of them, so I add them all up to integrate maybe. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, over here, uh, I again draw the rectangle in the only way I can, which is vertically, bless you. But now I'm rotating about the line x equals k, so I have to do like a shell is formed. So what is the volume of that shell? It's going to be, uh, as we've discussed many times, 2 pi r. But r is the distance the shell is from the axis of rotation. So for an arbitrarily chosen x value, the, the, the radius will be k minus x times the height of the shell, which is f of x minus g of x, uh, times the thickness of the shell, which is dx. And now I just integrate all of them um, from a to b. OK, over here I have some sideways action. Um, these two, okay, good. We have, this, um, we have these curves, x equals g of y and x equals f of y. Um, I shade my region, and then uh, I'm rotating around line x equals, well, the only way I can draw my rectangle is sideways, or consistently for, to, to exhaust the region. But since I'm rotating about a vertical line, and the representative rectangle is perpendicular to that, to that axis, then, um, then I get a... Uh, I get a washer, right? And what's relevant is the inner radius and the outer radius. Again, now I like mixed it up a little bit and kind of had the region sort of like bleeding off into the negative side just to, just to see if that was going to just like mess you up. And the answer is it should not. Did we have this conversation yesterday? How negative numbers just like work? They just like do what they're supposed to do? Yeah. Um, even though, uh, even though these x coordinates are sometimes positive and sometimes negative, the distance between two numbers is still. Like, they're different. Are they with me? So, uh, if, this, if, it, if this x value is k, k minus g of y, for, I guess, for an arbitrarily chosen y value along the y-axis, g of y is that x-coordinate. And k minus g of y will then be the inner radius always, and uh, k minus f of y will be the outer radius always. So this is outer radius k minus f of y, uh, squared minus k minus g of y uh, squared. And that whole thing is going to be multiplied by 
dy, and also pi, and we integrate up the y-axis from a to b. You guys getting this all right? Okay, good. Uh, last one, or almost last one, is this guy. Um, again, zoom, 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 zoom. I get a shell, right? And the shell is going to have dimensions 2 pi. The radius of the shell is the distance the shell is from the axis of rotation. So I called this y equals k. So how far apart is the how far apart is, uh, is, is this representative rectangle from this axis? Well, it's the difference in the y coordinates. And the difference in the y coordinates is just y minus k. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. 2 pi r and h is the length, the height of the rectangle, which is g of y minus f of y plus <coughs> y. And then dy, and then again we integrate up the y axis from a b. Okay, last two. Mm. I have this region, shade, I want to make semicircles. I want to build, mm, I want to build semicircles. How do I do it? Well, we're coming out of the board. So we take, we take this height, f of x minus g of x, and um, what do I do with it? Julie, what do I do? Basically, you find, uh, or you, yeah, you find the formula for semicircles, and then you just plug, up, plug in f of x minus g of x. Yeah, okay, I guess I'll take that answer. Um, what is the formula and why? Uh, well, okay, so the formula for a circle is pi r squared, um, and then since it's a semicircle, it would be pi over 2 uh, r squared, and then since it's really going to be the diameter, um, then it's pi over 2. Oh. Uh, times x over 2 pi squared. So yeah. You can just simplify that to pi over 8. Yeah. All true. What you said. Yeah. You have this length. The way I think of it is this is the diameter, right? So take it, divide it by 2, now it's the radius. Uh, square it, and multiply it by pi. Now that's the area of the semicircle. Now, or circle. Now divide by 2, that's the area of the semicircle. Give it a little thickness. Now that's the volume of a semicircular slice. Now add them all up from A to B. So, uh, some other thing going on over here. Now I'm doing it with respect to Y. So I take the length of that thing, and we just made this happy formula a couple days ago, that if you take this, square it, root 3 over 4, that that is the area of, a, um, of an equilateral triangle. Give it a little thickness, and integrate from A to B. All right, how you guys feel about this? Good. Um, we have a quiz, but like, I don't know, we don't need to like start it yet. I don't know, do you want to like review for a couple minutes with questions? Yeah, yeah. Which we do. Let's take it. Let's take yeah, it. Let's take it. Wait, they can't leave our work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, let's turn the camera off first of all. We don't need that thing anymore. Um, goodbye, Internet. I think that's the last.